Okay, um, the really good thing is uh, that Ghislaine and Ruth have kind of said everything really that I was going to say, so that's absolutely fantastic. I'm really pleased about that. I'm uh, just going to, I'm, I'm going to probably talk in a slightly different way really um, to the others in the sense that I think what I do really is kind of in the interstitial um, between research, the research base and the arts. It's not specifically always about ICT and the arts therefore um, either, but I work um, with Creative Works London and I also am a director of a, uh, an organisation called the Culture Capital Exchange. And we're going to talk a little bit about, as it were, this kind of, this, this, this space, this kind of interstitial space almost that is around I suppose the facilitation of um, collaboration and bringing people together that is sometimes given I think a really unfortunate um, shorthand name of knowledge exchange um, and I'm not sure that that's particularly useful um, or indeed uh, valuable term in some senses in some senses um, one of the things that I want to say really I think came from this notion I think that that Jelaine raised this notion about sort of um, people uh, being observers as it were within projects and so one of the things that I'm going to say today is that I feel that so often when you're kind of really immersed in these kinds of roles it is very hard to stand back and, and almost to come to today to do um, the kinds of things that I think are required to do, the kinds of the questionings actually about what we do, what works, etc. You get very immersed um, and I think it's really good, Camille, to have this space today, I think, for so many of us to actually think um, uh, and pull ourselves kind of back almost a little bit from the day-to-day -day, um, of what we do. So I thought I'd maybe sort of say just a few words, a little bit of kind of the groundwork, really the background, a sort of a preamble really to this Creative Works London project, which I will talk about, obviously. Um, and a few very ad hoc, very messy, very um, kind of non-logical, perhaps, uh, reflections on uh, collaborative um, collaborations and, and um, cross-disciplinary stuff and my mic's gone into a weird uh, place so uh, I don't know if this can affect things okay um, my own background I, I, I sort of had a paragraph there that I took out this morning which was sort of about myself um, so I'll say this very quickly but my own background really and I know Jelaine and Ruth for a very long time is as a uh, curator and producer in the digital art space in the UK. I used to run Lighthouse in Brighton and prior to that spent about nine years um, running the cultural programs in another lighthouse in Wolverhampton, sort of a similar space. And then there was this thing called LK's London Centre for Arts and Cultural um, Exchange or Enterprise I think as it was first called that was developed as you'll see uh, nine years ago, get it getting on for a decade ago now, um, and uh, I, I came to work for this this institute, this 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 sort of kind of nascent little body, um, and I was very attracted because I'd always, in my practice, I suppose as a curator, um, worked really closely with um, the research base in all sorts of kind of different different ways over the previous decade or so. So I was quite interested in this notion really of bringing research and the arts and cultural sector together because I think because I thought well everybody's doing it why on earth would you need a kind of a, a special um, kind of space uh, to, to do this in and, and, um, and I quickly kind of realized that um, although many people informally and quietly and probably in many instances quite under the radar were developing all sorts of really really interesting collaborations and I think you know certainly in the early late parts of the from the mid 90s on um, I think you know really the, the sort of very common practice I think for people to be working between the arts um, and institutions vis-a-vis -vis the, the kind of the, the context that we're talking specifically here about today around the arts and technology. Um, so 
we set up this 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 entity um it was originally housed in king's college in london and um the purpose of it as i say was really to encourage um or to create kind of spaces for researchers um and the arts and cultural sector to come uh together and i think um you know, there was no real, the, the really interesting thing was there was no mandate, there was kind of no expectation um, really, apart from the fact that, you know, I think universities at that point thought, well, there's this thing called knowledge transfer, it makes a lot of money. Um, hey, you know, maybe we could do the same with the arts and cultural sector if we work <coughs> with them. Um, and we had to sort of disabuse them of that notion quite sort of sharpishly because we said, well, if you think this is going to be a cash cow, it's, it, it, it ain't going to happen really because um, the arts and cultural sector, as we still know it, um, and as it certainly was then, tends not to have, you know, vast amounts of money to throw into academic institutions. Um, so over the course, we ran then for about six years um, as this space. Um, we, we, I mean, I, I think what we tried to do very, very early on was to just think of the space as an opportunity to um, do the kinds of things that perhaps would bring people together in, in um, you know, sort of new and maybe possibly quite unusual ways, um, although all of these things are quite small, you know, they're all incremental, tiny little things when you, when you, look, when you look back. Um, so it was a network of uh, originally seven universities and, and, and it grew um, up until the point a couple of years back where we became independent of King's College for a, a whole raft of reasons, um, largely to do with um, funding and government changes and all sorts of stuff which I won't bore you all with today but if you are interested in the real backstory uh, you know we can talk about that and we set up as the culture capital exchange um, and essentially really continuing to do the same work that we had done before but I suppose in a slightly freer way um, and in a way where we weren't kind of constrained and limited by things like um, weird finance departments in universities which mean that you know if you work with somebody they don't get paid for six months or whatever it is stuff like that i shouldn't say things like this on the record maybe we can edit that out and i'm so sorry if there's any of you here are vice um uh chancellors from universities but you know we have the pain of this um and uh we simultaneously um whilst we'd been working i think to sort of uh really think about what the next iteration almost of working together and collaboration might look like, um, we heard the kind of rumblings that the AHRC with whom we'd been working quite extensively over the previous sort of six or seven years and inviting them in and getting them to be part of these conversations about collaboration and about knowledge exchange about impact a lot, really, really a lot. Um, we're at that point also then deciding to scale up, um, again we can sort of talk about all, all these things, scale up their activities and instead of sort of giving out smaller grants, the AHRC had decided that it wanted to put the resources that previously would have gone into small collaborative pots into for um, what they called uh, and what are called knowledge exchange hubs in the UK. We put in a bid with Queen Mary um, to run one of those um, hubs and, and uh, subsequently, after a year of deep pain and many more grey hairs, uh, got awarded, um, we're told that we had this hub. Um, great and they're really, really good and really, really, really positive and really negative things about the increasing instrumentalisation, I suppose, of um, these uh, collaborative initiatives, which we can maybe stand back about a little ba a bit and, and, and reflect upon, um, you know, the, the pros and, and cons of these things in a slightly more political way. I wanted to kind of talk just, just I mean, we in six, seven or, or eight years run literally uh, hundreds probably of, of events um, and round tables and an annual festival with about 50 events every, every October. 
um, and, and you know it, it's sort of a real programming organization um, very similarly in a way to the work that um, one would expect a, an arts uh, organization to run but I just listed a few sort of key things there um, that I think were quite um, they were kind of maybe slightly seminal things that, that we did um, that I think started to bring together um, combinations of the research community with the practice based um, arts and cultural community um, in ways that I think for, for us put down some serious markers about the need for collaborations to be more widely somehow validated um, and, and by that process of validation I, I don't just mean you know that it's a nice thing to happen but that there would be some money on the table that, that these things would be kind of recognized and processes would be put in place to enable them to actually occur beyond people just working together because they enjoyed um, doing so. So anyway, you know, things like Beyond the Academy Researchers Exhibition at Tate was, was an important marker. Pre previous to that, we'd done an event um, to, to really kickstart the whole process called The Art of Partnerships. And that brought people screaming and uh, kind of dragging their heels a bit from the arts and the academy, um, kind of in a curious way, to explore terrain um, as well as a sort of a slightly, well, we're not quite sure why we're here, but we feel it's a good thing anyway. Um, so, uh, and, 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 and on and on and on, and the key things here that I want to sort of, there's some people I've mentioned by name because I think they're really important people, though maybe not here today. Um, but one of the things that was very, very interesting as well was sort of right back, this is pre Nesta, this is pre the digital uh, R&D fund, for example. Um, Arts Council London commissioned us, Rachel Baker at Arts Council London, to be more specific and to name names, and we don't name names often enough, um, came to us and said, actually, you know, I think it would be really fantastic if Arts Council and AHRC and Nesta might develop some triangulation um, for um, supporting work could would that be possible and um i said well god you know this is this is going to be a real struggle i don't know how this could ever happen etc cetera, etc cetera. um and i don't know uh we we did quite a lot of work to look at what just a small snapshot of uh arts council iros at that stage as they were called now npos in the visual arts sector might want from um developing kind of relationships of collaborations with university and we did quite a lot of work around that uh, whole area which I think did sort of has fed into those wider processes um, and again previous to the whole kind of notion or the more widespread articulation of impact um, within the universities one gets these feelings you know one always feels where the next Thing, good or bad is going to be and if you can preempt in your head you know where these things are happening it's 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 it can be quite useful um, you can help to shape little little bits of conversations and little bits of stuff um, so we did that and also then some of you might know Brona Ferran she's someone who I think is a tremendous imagineer as well and, and um, uh, as well as Rachel and uh, she produced a brilliant um, it was quite a short, uh, quite a small essay for us about sort of creative ecologies between the arts and higher education. And these small things, I think, begin to set, you know, it's just seeding all the time. And this is one of the things with collaborations and with the work that you're doing, Camille, as well with the ICT, you know, it's sort of constant seeding smaller things that grow and grow and grow over or that can grow over time. So. We, I mean, maybe it was as a result of some of that stuff that, that we felt that this would be an interesting project to go for, the AHRC hub. They're quite, um, it's a fairly, they're four years, it's a four year funded project, these hubs, um, and they're about four, four to five million pounds each. So, I mean, a, a significant investment of funds from the um, AHRC. And the driving kind of aim of Creative Works London, the London based hub, was really to create um, a space, to, to, to create an opportunity, I think, in particular, to um, look at how arts and humanities research in the UK um, and, and in, in our 
London institutions, how that research really works um, with the creative um, economy and how it can really help the creative economy. Um, very much about enhancing that kind of connectivity with the creative and we use creative economy in a very, very quite loose um, way. I think uh, it's fair to say. So just the, the sort of the, the meat of it or the core of it is that there are three research um, clusters, one on digital economy um, and I work in and with that group one on uh, placework knowledge, um, notions of you know, the, the physicality of space and why particular um, institutions or organisations may wish to, to, to be based there, and one which is around audience. And then uh, TCCE, we run the knowledge exchange programme associated with Creative Works London as well. Um, and I'm just going to talk about that because that really is the funded, so we run basically the funded collaborations bit um, of Creative Works London. And we have three main, there are three things that we do. We have a, uh, what really boringly is called a creative voucher scheme. I think it came from somewhere, uh, somebody else was doing a creative voucher scheme and these things always get recycled. Um, a researcher in residence scheme where an, an academic researcher um, will go and uh, work with a cultural or creative uh, or digital creative um, company or organization and a creative entrepreneur in residence and again you know these terms are quite uh, broad um, and that would be where an artist a practitioner of, of whatever kind would go um, and have a kind of a, a, a fairly free time to go and work in, in an institution. <coughs> there are different kind of financing around all of these things. The creative entrepreneur in residence, they each get about five grand. The researcher in residence and the universities get nothing. The researcher in residence gets five grand and the company gets nothing. And the creative uh, vouchers um, the, the, the universities get more, they get £10,000 and the individual gets 5000 but we had to fight for a very, very, very long time um, with, well not a very long time, but we certainly had to sort of really make a case to AHRC that um, we ought to be able to, to, to have some, uh, you know, um, parity there or, or a bit. Um, these are research partners that are actually involved in the project. Um, these are just a few uh, sort of images from some of the projects that we've we've supported. I mean, just to kind of go back, um, we've. I, th I think it's worth. Yeah, I mean, we've we've run. We work around. We work quite thematically. So with the vouchers round, I mean, we've had five. We, we're now in the the throes in just uh, a 15, 16 month period now of having the sixth um, round. So we've, we've um, worked onto these, these are the themes. So mobility and mobile culture, co-production and co-creation, notions of locality. We had an open round where people could pitch sort of any project ideas. And, and more lately, um, we, uh, the last round that um, I run this was on archives um, and digitization. And then we have one coming up now on um, demonstrating, demonstrating value, which again, of course, is a very, uh, you know, is a very sort of um, important and hot topic. Um, and so, yeah, we've supported quite a few projects. I, I've mentioned a few. Look further field, Ruth. Um, I think you had you worked twice, didn't you? Maybe with the Creative Voucher as well. Um, so there's about 40 partners on the project. 38, uh, I think, many universities. 14 um, HEIs. We worked. We wanted strategically to bring the IROs, or the independent research organisations, on board. So we have five of the six, I think it is, in London that are recognised under AHRC, which is Tate, v &A, British Library, British Museum and the National Archives. And then quite a raft of other 
cultural bodies, very you know, significant players, obviously, like the Arts Council and the BFI, um, uh, and, and also you know, Tech City Investment Organization via Chris Moore, who was then seconded to that particular project um, and who's you know, sort of still heavily involved in the project, came on, um, as did players like IBM, and then sort of smaller organizations as well, like um, Furtherfield and Playgen, um, and some museums too. Um, and these are some photographs. And I'm being sort of going to whiz over because I'm way over. I'm 22 minutes. So, and they're very lovely. But I think here today we're here to sort of to talk about the challenges of collaboration. And so um, I, uh, you know, as I said earlier, this is in no particular kind of, um, it's all quite random. Um, I wish I had had more time to really think about this. But as I said previously, I think Ruth and Jelaine have covered a lot of this territory much, much, much better um, in a way than I am going to. But uh, at a sort of a slightly more meta level, I suppose, one of the things that I'm concerned with is that um, I think there is a real, you know, pe people really want to work together. Um, and I don't think it's always just about the money. I think people, I think we know, you know, that, that we're, we're, we're stronger together, that, that people bring different things to one another and that that's so, so important. I mean, in, fr from, from my perspective, I think what's a real challenge and what we have to be thinking about a lot is how we can best kind of um, narrativize these processes um, and support them, you know, how do we make bodies um, in the UK, funding bodies, government bodies, how do we create an awareness of the need, the benefits, the values of um, collaboration? Um, we have to, you know, these are cases that are still not fully um, made. It's really good. In fact, I think um, uh, the whole um, Horizon 2020 initiatives like Creative Europe, I think kind of give hope actually, and it's important for the UK to start to think more strategically about developing European um, relationships because um, probably that's where the money is going to be. Oops. Uh, yeah, um, I think establishing methodologies, um, reviewing and evaluation is a big, big challenge. I'm so glad that, um, you know, Ruth and um, Ghislaine gave us some really, really good uh, help us on that but I think kind of evaluation methodologies to me seem kind of very often very outdated um, they seem incredibly unimaginative they seem to not permit they t they seem to mitigate against um, notions that in the arts we really um, you know respect and value like the notion of the conversation the notion of event the notion of space and bringing people together um and they look instead to um you know to 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 logics and to the creation of 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 a kind of a logic for things and i actually think that policy makers are not inherently logical beings um i think they're as prone to whimsy as the rest of us um, and therefore, I think, you know, the, the whole kind of notion of what an evaluation methodology should be um, needs to be really expanded and challenged and sought about in a much more imaginative way. Um, uh, long term collaborators versus one off. I mean, we're seeing quite a lot of kind of shotgun wedding type things with Creative Works London, which is quite interesting. People kind of go, oh, my God, yeah, there's a little bit of money. Oh, yeah. They come in a room, we have an event and they develop a project and um, Sometimes it really works, sometimes it falls to pieces. It's very interesting to witness, um, you know, and I'm, I'm not, this is not a value judgment at all. I think, you know, it's really interesting just looking at um, the longer term collaborators because obviously there, I think, you know, you can see that maturity. There is a generosity. People who've worked over years um, together um, may I, I think, you know, are much more likely to do so in future. So I think we have to be thinking about how we can nurture, 
how we can nurture the one-off, how we can actually help people who have just started to work together to, um, to, you know, to develop their working relationships. I've talked about uh, the, the, the space uh, for creating non-instrumental activity. Um, I spend a lot of my time, resentfully, I have to say, developing very instrumental activity, activity that puts people together, um, uh, you know, with a very direct objective, um, not so much built into this project, although we're trying to carve out the space for this to happen, is the freer, more fluid um, space, because I, I actually think that, you know, you can't, that, that you really need the free, fluid, um, intense spaces where people get together and they're not necessarily just talking about the application that they're going to put in for something, but where conversations have a freer reign. Um, and I think that one of, the tr one of the problems that we have with a lot of funded collaborative processes is that everything is about the actual application itself. And I think we have to be aware of the fact that we need to create other spaces that aren't instrumentalized and territorialized in such a way. Um, trust we've talked about, um, funding and funding regimes. Um, well, again, you know, I mean, I think we have to be aware of the differences of the funding regimes that we are all tied up with, and we are, all of us, bound up in those relationships, whether it's with, uh, with Arts Council or whether it's with Biz or the TSB or AHRC or whatever. And those regimes have, again, themselves, I think, different value sets. So being uh, cognizant of how to play in and out of those value sets, I think is really, really important. Um, who values what? Scale is something that's fascinating me at the minute a lot. I think some, some organisations are really valuing big over, over micro um, and that's interesting. Small being viewed perhaps as dysfunctional, big more functional. There are issues there, we need to think about them and talk about them. Um, yeah and just the need for more kind of uh, accepting that knowledge is fluid um, and uh, and accepting that we need to sort of create spaces for new approaches to how that should be generated through such collaborations. So, um, yeah, I think I'll leave it. Uh, I think I'll leave it at there. I've vastly overrun. I'm so sorry. Thanks. <laughs>